Hello, I wanted to drop in with a quick note before getting this typical daily solve going to let you know that if you stick around past the end of today's solve, there is a very short but fun, I think, bonus solve of a puzzle created by Lyle, one of the community members of the daily solve who uh, shared this very interesting puzzle he created with members of the daily solve discord chat server uh, in the constructors corner room over on that server. It's a puzzle consisting entirely of uh, rebus cells. And if you're interested in that, like I say, keep watching after the end and my solve is there. Anyway, let's get on with the daily solve. Hello, it is Tuesday, October 26th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so um, maybe it may be a bit harder than Mondays, although I think it was generally agreed that yesterday was a little difficult for a Monday, so sometimes that balances out, and today, perhaps a little easier for a Tuesday. I don't even know why I'm bother <laughs> bothering to predict that. There's absolutely no way I could possibly know. But um, quickly, I will mention that uh, up on the Patreon camp campaign, if you subscribe to that, you can see a number of bonus videos, including posted over the weekend, latest week of mini puzzle speed solving, as well as very much not a speed solve of the third Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition puzzle, which I'm, I'm glad people uh, get value of seeing, seeing me really work through those. Uh, anyway, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve, link underneath the video as well. And I'll just move right along to some comments from yesterday's puzzle, because there were there were several. Uh, first off, regarding the theme from yesterday's puzzle, the theme answer revealer was easy peasy and was clued as being something that's so simple, but also helps explain the clues. And the clues had each clue consist, sorry, each theme answer consisted of two words beginning with P and Z in that order. And so I got the sort of peasy part, still didn't really understand how easy fits into the, uh, into those theme answers. I mean, I understand that easy peasy is a, is a phrase, but Stephen Nori comments to, this is a bit of an explanation, it says, per the constructor notes, they originally wanted to make it such that each theme entry contained an E, Z, P, Z pairing to better fit the revealer. So actually all four of those letters, but then just paired it back to the easy P, Z version we see today. So there we go. It was maybe a theme that was slightly too ambitious to be fully realized. And that explains it, I suppose. All right. Laura Sexton says, if you had been born in the first half of the last century as I was, you would have gotten The World of Susie Wong right off. It was a movie that got a lot of publicity. And I looked it up. I think it was 1961 or so, The World of Susie Wong. And that was a clue that I had to get through crosses. Wasn't familiar with it. Perhaps I will check it out. Okay. Shantanu Bhatia says that SAT is one of those acronyms like KFC. It used to stand for Scholastic Aptitude Test, but now officially is just SAT with no official full form. I'm always skeptical of that sort of thing, but uh, fair enough, I suppose. And Eric Ratomero says, there are a number of things in biology called cilia, which came up in yesterday's puzzle. And it, I didn't know this, but uh, as this person points out, it is the Latin word for eyelashes. So obviously eyelashes are one. As you mentioned, insects also have things called cilia, which are fine hairs along the wings. And more interesting, and what I always think of when I hear cilia, Individual cells can have cilia. These are long protuberances, and since they are at the single cell level, are obviously very different to a fine hair structurally. They can be used for motility, cell sensing, and a number of other specialized functions. So there we go. And then finally, regarding the presence of the Polish zloty, the currency of Poland, in the puzzle, I was thinking, well, Poland is part of the EU, so why don't they use the euro? And Chris Livornia says, I see your confusion about Poland. They are indeed a part of the EU, but have retained their national currency. The UK did the same thing until Brexit, of course. And I think, I suppose the reason I was confused is because I, um, so Britain actually explicitly had an opt out from the Euro. I looked this up and Poland doesn't. Poland actually is still legally mandated to join the Euro and become part of the Eurozone. It's just that there has been no date set to do so. And it's now been 
uh, 17 years or so since Poland joined the EU, and no, uh, no real progress made on that front. And the Polish population is apparently not very enthusiastic about the idea of joining the euro. But interestingly, since the pandemic started, support in Poland for joining the euro has gone up significantly. So that's sort of interesting. Anyway, maybe that will eventually resolve itself one day, but certainly not in the time frame of this video. So let's move on to today's crossword. This is a Tuesday puzzle constructed by Michael Schlossberg and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It will be some sort of themed puzzle. We don't know how, because as a non-Sunday puzzle, there's no title. We'll have to find it for ourselves. So ready to get started? Okay. All right, off-the-cuff remarks. Off-the-cuff remarks, I'm not sure offhand. London TV initials. Could that be as straightforward as BBC? I mean, there's nothing London specific about the BBC, but often in the crossword, a city or a town will serve as a stand-in for an entire country. That does happen uh, pretty often, actually, especially with languages. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure. So let's keep looking around. Um, so wheat could be cool if that were BBC. Let's look at some crosses here. Fair hiring letters. Oh, right. So this is something I always sort of, um, I always forget the order in which these go. It's something like EEO, which is Equal Employment Opportunity. I, th I think that's what this might be. And let's see, does that help us all at all if we put in BBC here? Then we have Flowering Plant, also known as Horse Mint. Right. I, a begonia? Let's see, looks for web content about oneself. Google something? Just in case that, if that is indeed a G, but I don't actually know. Oh, wait a second. Oh, interesting. And then we've got another, <laughs> an, oh, you know what? Maybe this one's begonia, actually, coincidentally. Colorful garden perennial. So this is funny. We've got two flowers starting with B-E. So if that was begonia, this could be looks for web content about oneself. Ego surfs, perhaps? It says in surfs the web. I'm not sure I've heard that phrase before, but it sounds plausible enough. Um, so what does that make this any easier? Flowering plant, also known as horse mint. B, I don't know. Let's look at some more crosses. Connery, who played 007 seven times. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Sean Connery, the original screen James Bond. Nobelist Weasel, that's Eli, Eli Weasel. No, Elia? How do you spell that name? I think it's E. Head of a train, right, abbreviation would be engineer. Uh, and here, just straight up tells us it'll be an abbreviation, so that's straightforward enough. So what is this plant? Flowering plant, also known as horse mint. Um, I don't know that I... So begonia, <laughs> I don't know very much about begonias, but I've heard of it. I don't know that I've heard of whatever this is. Let's, we'll have to keep going. Uh, venison is uh, the meat of a deer, right? So, and then a can full at a gas station. I wonder if this is STP, which S has come up in the crossword maybe once or twice over the course of this series, is a motor oil brand. It's possible. Let's look at this long answer. Basic practical details. Ah, that looks like nuts and bolts. This could plausibly be one of the theme answers. Uh, you never know. This looks odd. B bay. Sort of want it to be bee bane. <laughs> Sometimes plants are the bane of an of a animal or something. That would be sort of funny. Um I might just delete this for now just to sort of remind me that this area is up in the air. And I'll move on for the time being. Awaken, uh, rouse maybe, or roused. Probably rouse more accurately with awaken specifically. And then if this were STP, the catbird seat, oh, with a question mark. So when you see a question mark, if you're new to the crossword, that means there's some kind of pun or wordplay. So 
What does the catbird seat typically mean? Is that sort of the passenger side seat, I think, maybe? Not completely certain. I have It's not an expression I've seen used very frequently. But it doesn't really matter because um, with this question mark, we're not using whatever the typical reading of this would be. We're using a more punish and answer that is a bit cute. And so I think in this case, it might be perch. And I think what this might be implying is a cat might sit on a perch or, you know, perch on a ledge or something in order to try and, and um, catch a bird. That, that's my guess. So let's see if that, if we can confirm that with crosses. Something played that's not a game. A role, one might play a role in a dramatic production. Here we have blank Boyardee, Chef Boyardee, which I learned recently that, um, so Chef Boyardee is an American canned food brand. I think they do a lot of canned pastas. And there was a Boyardi, an Italian immigrant who originally founded this. And I think they've gotten really into using that in their marketing to suggest there's something somehow sort of <laughs> historically informed or artisanal about their canned pastas. Okay. Harleys in slang. This probably refers to Harley Davidson motorcycles or hogs. Hogs as one might call motorcycles. Treble symbols. Ah, so this is a musical term. This is this is maybe slightly tricky for a Tuesday, but this would be G clefs. So in musical notation on the staff, which is what you call those the lines on which the notes are inscribed, at the at the beginning of the line, there's a symbol called the clef, and that indicates the range of notes that that th this staff will include because it wouldn't be practical to have all the possible notes fit on a single staff. There'd just be too many. So different instruments play in different ranges and you use different clefs to indicate which range of notes we're going to be using on this particular staff. And one of them is the G clef. One of the actually particularly common ones is the G clef. Okay. Big name in pesticides. Not sure. Blank Ray, 1950s to 1970s leading man. Oh, Aldo Ray? I think, strangely, this person's name was reused for a character in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, a character played by Brad Pitt, maybe? Let's see if that's let's see if that's right. What expensive things cost? Ah, yes, here we have an arm and a leg. So we can see how what how the theme is shaping up here. We've got uh, idiomatic phrases in which two objects are used as stand-ins for um, some some useful way of describing things, basic practical details, or a very expensive outlay cost. Okay, big name in pesticides. Um, with that DC, I think maybe decon sort of sounds familiar to me. And here we have sniffed around, could be nosed around. And as I, as I have said a few times, when you see those parentheses, it's just a little helper. It's You can add the parenthetical word to both the clue and the answer, and it will make it even a cleaner match than it otherwise would be. So sniffed is to nosed, but also sniffed around, as sniffed around is to nosed around. So around goes with both of them to create the same meaning. Okay. Goes 60 in a 30 mile per hour zone, say, would be uh, speeds. And to draw out is to maybe evince or, uh, let's see, evoke or entrap. Mahmoud Abbas's group, the PLO, I would think. So does that help here? Draw out. E, why am I not seeing this? Not sure. Shrek's companion in Shrek. Um, what well, was the other? It was the... Lady Ogre, right? I don't remember. Donna? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Here's the revealer. I didn't even notice. Doctor whose shopping list might include 20, 34, and 42 across. Oh, I bet I know. I bet I know what this is. This is very clever. Um, this is, uh, I bet this is Dr. Frankenstein, who might be creating Frankenstein, I suppose, as depicted in the uh, sort of 
classical screen form with the nut, the the uh, nuts and bolts sort of sticking out of his neck. So let's see, would that fit if I put Frankenstein in here? Yes, it does. That's very good. Okay, so a magnet for criticism is a lightning rod, and that that fits in here with this Dr. Frankenstein bit. He needs a lightning rod to animate the arm and leg, arm and the leg that he affixes to Frankenstein with nuts and bolts. So there we go. That's the whole we've we've blazed through the theme. That's that's quite fun. That's clever. And it's nice that these are all metaphorical usages of sort of mundane nouns. So it it's sort of a double duty theme. Uh, that's that's quite good. Quite clever. Well done, Michael Schlossberg. Okay. Uh, treat with a... Oh, right. Okay. Haven't seen this clue yet. Treat with a 71% to 29% cookie to cream ratio. Well, it's an old standby in the crossword. We actually haven't had so many Oreos recently, although I know they're no, it's Oreos are notoriously overused crossword clue. And someone was telling me, maybe in the comments recently, a couple months ago perhaps, that at the New York Times, there's a rule that Oreo has been so heavily used that if a constructor is going to use it, it needs a new clue that has not itself been used before. And I certainly did not know that Oreo has a 71% to 29% cookie to cream ratio. So there we go. Okay, so this is goof as a noun, I would think, to error, to make a mistake. Blank jam recordings, deaf jam recordings, the record label. Castaways help, um, SOS, which I now know from doing the crossword, doesn't stand for anything. It's just an easy to uh, easy to um, signal collection of Morse code. So there we go. I mean, it, there there have been retroactively applied uh, unpackings of this, such as save our ship or save our souls. But in fact, it's just letters that are easy to signal. Okay, what some ugly ducklings turn into? Well, as per the classic children's story, swans. The ugly duckling turned into a swan. And a word before tea or fet, boba, boba tea, the um, uh, milk tea with tapioca balls, or boba fett from Star Wars. Off the cuff remarks, I'm still not seeing that for some reason. Place for daisies. Um, a window? Don't know. Microscopic life form, an amoeba. Fateful day for Caesar, ah, the Ides, beware the Ides of March. Uh, let's see. Have we looked at these downs yet? No, I don't think so. Alternatives to Maytags. So Maytag is a manufacturer of kitchen appliances. And I think maybe Amana is another manufacturer of kitchen appliances. So we would have a plural on that. And crystal ball gazers, e.g., are seers. And so the e.g. just means, you know, it means for example. And so it's saying that a seer isn't literally a crystal ball gazers, but crystal ball, gaz ball gazers are an example of seers. Poison ivy eruption is a rash. Oh, you know what? Let's try and finish off this corner, actually. Modest and shy could be demure. And Chinese philosopher who wrote the Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu, I would think. And then, right, so that confirms Ars Poetica here. Oh, and off-the-cuff remarks are ad-libs. Right, of course. That makes perfect sense, but I was nowhere near. <laughs> I was nowhere near getting that. And then daisies are in a meadow. That makes perfect sense as well. Uh, right, so that leaves this. Oh, bee balm must be horse mint. That's a funny phrase, bee balm. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with that. I'll have to look it up. So there we go, and we can keep moving through the puzzle. A fit of irritation could be a snit. Tennis's Kornikova, Anna Kornikova, I think. And to spill the beans is to blab, to, uh, to, to talk, to sing. And as I've pointed out a few times, spill the beans is itself sort of an idiomatic expression. And so that's going to be matched, generally speaking in the crossword, by another bit of, in this case, a bit of slang to blab, as opposed to a sort of straight synonym, if that makes sense. So often the uh, sort of mood of speech will be matched between the clue and the answer. Not strictly always, but that is generally the case. Okay, French words of endearment, je t'aime, uh, means I love you, I, I, you, to love. And funny thing about this is that the, the verb, aimer, from which M is conjugated, actually means to like. 
strangely enough, it only means love when you're saying it to another person, I think. I mean, perhaps a French person or French native, you know, fluent French speaker will correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that that word actually means like in all contexts, except when said to a person, in which case it means love, which is sort of interesting. Okay, brings home with a hit as a base runner. Bats in, I would suppose. And then end of the week shout would be TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And does that work here? What blank <laughs> chopped liver? What am I chopped liver? And that's sort of fun in that you could also clue this as a French word for friend, which would cross this French word here. And I think on a Tuesday, it was correct not to. Um, I think that would be a bit, a bit much on a Tuesday to have two bits of French vocabulary crossing one another. So no need. We can do it with chopped liver. Okay, to prove appropriate for something or someone is to befit that thing or person. And a warrior's open words might be, I fear. I fear solving the next boss worth's fall famous league puzzle when it, actually, I guess it already is out. I'll just need to find a time to do it. All right, urging for a reluctant person. Try, you might urge someone, try. Try that boss words puzzle. Maybe it won't be so bad this week. Yeah. Hagger the Horrible's dog. Oh, this comes up in the crossword maybe once every several months. Um, it's snurt or snurred or something. I think at the very least it starts with snur. <laughs> so let's see if we can confirm or deny that. If one has a part to play, one acts in a role. Didn't roll? Yes. In a role, something played that's not a game. So let's, let's see if that in turn can be confirmed. A carrier based in Tehran, well, probably be Iran Air. I would think. I'm not 100% certain that that's the name of the airline, but that would seem pretty plausible. Item left at home on casual Fridays. A necktie, I suppose. And the vicinity. A vicinity is an area and a place for a guard is a gate. So those look both look good. Here we have a trash hauling ship. That would be a scow, I believe. And a kind of cuisine offering Tom Young Gung and Tom Ka Kai is Thai cuisine. So here we have full of S curves, as in a road, for instance, might be twisty. And that does confirm that Hagger the Horrible's dog is snurt. That's a, um, I didn't, I think I didn't explain what this is, if you don't know. This is an, a newspaper comic in the United States. I have no idea if it's still running or what, but this, <laughs> this character's dog's name comes up in the crossword occasionally. And there it is. Okay. A prowling kitty, oh, an alley cat, I would think, and then battery liquid, acid, and then what was this? Oh, east on a grandfather clock, right, would be the three o'clock position. And then battery liquid, liquid acid, beats by Dre, headphones brand, that looks right. Um, here we have a Star Wars princess, is Leia. Tuesday is the hardest crossword of the week, e.g. Well, today's Tuesday, certainly not the hardest crossword of the week, at least I assume it will not be. So that would be a lie. Here we have Edmonton's province is Alberta, Canada, and Spike or Gypsy Rose. Oh, Spike Lee or Gypsy Rose. Oops, Lee. And then what is this beer crossing here? Brewski. Uh, yeah, sure, beer. That's actually, I suppose, a case in which the slangy Brewski doesn't really match with the straightforward beer, but I mean, I guess they would be said in precisely the same context. Toss me a brewski, toss me a beer, if someone ever says that. Okay, to draw out is to elicit and virtual payment with a bank routing number. Come on, <laughs> give me a break. An e-check. So here it is. It's actually been a while since we've had an e, an e word, an e answer. And I don't like these. <laughs> I find this to be a very poor style of crossword answer in which a perfectly ordinary word is appended or is prefixed with an E to turn it into something electronic. And we understand what this means, an electronic check, an E-check, but no one says an E-check. No one says, send me an E-check. I've never heard anyone say that. I don't think anyone's ever heard anyone say that. Anyway, that's the answer. We'll move on. Shrek's companion and Shrek. Oh, it must be donkey. Right. I suppose. Okay. And then, I mean, there is a donkey in those movies and I guess its name was donkey maybe. 
And then the band's hired hand would be a roadie, the person who carries equipment around for a band. And there we go. There's the Tuesday puzzle. All right. So I don't think that was necessarily easy for a Tuesday puzzle. I think that was probably comparably difficult uh, to yesterday's slightly tough Monday puzzle, you know, for for these early week puzzles, obviously. Um, and I really liked the theme. I thought that was very well conceived and, very, and just very cleanly executed. Nuts and bolts and arm and a leg, lightning rod are all used by Dr. Frankenstein. They're all in his shopping list. And these are all idiomatic phrases that use ordinary objects in order to convey uh, some kind of, of useful descriptive meaning. Although I suppose my initial guess after nuts and bolts and an arm and a leg was that they would each be two things connected with and, and that isn't the case with lightning rod. But I mean, fair enough, that was just my my early guess once we get to the Frankenstein thing that puts a different different cast over the, over the whole theme. So yes, I enjoyed that. I also was, I did enjoy these two plants directly adjacent to one another, each starting with BE. That was, uh, that was just a nice little touch. And um, a few more bits of echoing throughout the puzzle, such as the roll and acts, a few little things like that. Um, anyway, and, and, you know, I would say bits of challenge throughout this bee balm, one of these BE plants, I did struggle with that. And we, that does cross with Nobelist Wiesel. So that could be tough if you, if you didn't know either of these. Um, it's always difficult when you have two sort of proper nouns. I don't know if bee balm counts as a proper noun, but I think it's, it's not, not a common word that most of us, I think, use in our daily lives. That's, that's certainly the case. Um, anyway, oh, and G clefts, that would, that would, I suspect that would be tough if you, if you didn't have any sort of musical reading knowledge, but yes, do let me know how you fared with this crossword. I did enjoy it. And, um, I hope you've been enjoying this series. If you have, please do subscribe to the channel and it'll be easy for you to find these videos as they go up each morning. And if you think you know someone who might enjoy these videos, then pass it along. Pass it along to an individual friend or to uh, your place of residence online, whatever sort of place that might be. Someone there might enjoy it as well. You never know. And if you particularly would like to support this channel, you can do so through the Patreon campaign, which is linked in the description field underneath the video or can be found at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there for uh, various contributions, including one starting at three pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get access to all of the bonus videos to date that have been put up there, as well as all of the future videos to come. And at some levels, you can get a, um, a, a mug, an exclusive mug that will only be available to patrons through that mechanism. And that, uh, the design has been voted on by people who will be receiving the mug, and it's it's I think it's largely been confirmed that what we'll be getting is the um, the uh, let's check the crosses design out of the three that I that I put up for offer. Anyway, if you'd like to get in on that, it's at patreon.com slash daily solve. And finally, speaking of that, I would like to thank a few people who have been particularly generous with the Patreon, and I would like to personally thank them. So today, I am thanking the inestimable hood monster, the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia, and Joe Percy. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, hood monster. Thank you, Shantanu, for your generous support. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to everyone else who's backed the Patreon campaign. And thank you to you for watching this video, for making it all the way to the end. I appreciate that as well. That in itself is its own uh, little vote of confidence in this series. So um, I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle. And until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Hello, welcome back to The Daily Solve. I thought I would record this extra little epilogue to showcase a puzzle that I was sort of interested in solving and hadn't yet solved that I mentioned on the channel the other day, which is that Lyle, who's some one of the participants in the Discord chat server, which 
It's free for anyone to join. So feel free to do that by clicking the description, um, the link in the description field underneath the video to join the Discord chat server. Um, Lyle had, has constructed a puzzle consisting entirely of rebus answers. And if you've not yet seen a crossword that contains rebuses, they are, um, it's when more than one letter is entered into a single cell in the crossword. And I thought that was such a such a funny and interesting feat of crossword construction that maybe instead of solving it on my own, which is usually what I do with the crosswords that people have constructed in the Constructors Corner channel in the Discord, maybe I'll do it on video. Maybe, maybe, maybe that would be a fun thing to do. And I could just append it to the end of a video, which is what I'm doing now. And if you'd like to solve this yourself before watching this video, it's um, I, I'm, I'm recording this introduction, having already solved it actually now. So I know that it's it's not a very long or large crossword. So you might want to give it give it a shot of your own, and then come back and, and watch this bit if you're if you're interested in seeing my solve. And there will be a link in the description field as well underneath this video, so you can go directly to this crossword. You can also join the Discord chat server from there and and see the um, discussion around this puzzle that was generated after Lyle pasted it, pasted a link in there. So very well done. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. This is called Rebus Regret, and here's here's my solve. There's a constructor's note that says here, it's not uncommon for fans of Chris Remo's series, The Daily Solve, to dismiss Rebus-enabled themes, that is, when multiple letters fit into the same square, as cheating. But what if that idea were taken to the extreme? This puzzle attempts to find out. Each square contains a pair of letters with no pair repeated. If you're solving on Crosshair.org, which is this website, you can enter Rebus answers using the escape key. Good luck. So um, I, uh, I have not yet looked at the puzzle. Um, I see that it's a it must be a small or strangely shaped grid. So we'll see what that's about. Um, but anyway, hope hope you enjoy. I hope I enjoy. I'm sure I will. Resume. All right. Oh wow. Okay. Very. Oh wow. Interesting. So there's a there's an isolated section of of cells down there that have no, cannot be checked with crosses. Oh boy, this is, I can already tell this is going to be actually pretty tricky. A new job that goes up in smoke. God, I don't know. Errors. Well, okay, let's, let's, oh wait, did he, did they say they were all pairs? I actually don't remember. Are they all pairs of letters? So that actually makes it a little easier. I was thinking the rebuses could be anything. So first name for shorts would be Will, right? So W-I, oops, no. So I don't know the software very well. W-I, oh no, W-I-L-L. -L. Okay, there we go. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just scanning through the clues. I see Lion Count in Trafalgar Square. That's here in London, actually. Um, is that four? Yes, when the times were precedented, uh, as opposed to unprecedented, they were that would be before, and that fits with four lines in Trafalgar Square. So, B E F O R E, and then U R, and then a badly bold cricket ball. Is that wild? No, I don't know actually. And then a grain grinder. A millet, errors, mistakes, presumably. And then an approximation, an estimate. Here we have fourth dimension, which some, some say, some call time, the fourth dimension. A church event in the Catholic Church or the Anglican Church would be a mass. And the place where soldiers sup is a mess, so that fits. This is very funny. This is very clever. <laughs> I, I wonder how one would this. This is such an interesting thing to construct. All of the, all of the um, answers need to be even of an even number of letters, of course. Part of a fence, a, a fence post. So the new job that goes up in smoke. Oh, this is so clever. A pope. What a great, what a great clue, because the pope, when the pope is chosen, the the, what is it? The white smoke comes up out of the out of the chimney. Mountain top is a peak. Kauai. Um, is that an island? No, that's not how you spell the Hawaiian island. All right, let's finish this off over here. Animal depicted in cave paintings. Oh wait, a grain grinder would be a miller, I suppose, a miller, and then a deer is depicted in, 
Oh, a badly bowled cricket ball looks like wide. That looks that looks right. Okay, so we've got wide, Will, Deer, Miller. Here we have celestial clothing. Celestial cl clothing. Why do I not see what that is? Here we have opposite of fake would be real. And blank appropriation. Oh, cultural appropriation, presumably. So what was this? Celestial clothing. Oh, belt is in Orion's belt. That's clever. And then here we have kawaii cute. Oh, that must be cute in Japanese. And then, so now we've got to fill out this little isolated area. Organization that works between continents. Boy, that feels like it could be quite a few things, doesn't it? <laughs> Organization that works above continents. Very nice cross. Maybe this is NASA. Oops. Because literally above continents in the in the sky, perhaps. And then she blank, and then she said that could be. And elf made gifts. Oh, right. Maybe not says, but maybe maybe not said, but says, because then elf made gifts could be toys. And then organization that works between continents, NATO, very clever, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So, there we go. That was it. Very clever. What a fun, what a fun idea for a crossword. It would be, um, it would be interesting to, to take this even further and do it as some kind of huge grid. I mean, that could be a real challenge both to construct and to solve, uh, but very, very fun with this big question mark uh, shape as well. What a, what a, just a funny, clever idea for a crossword. And I think well clued as well. Um, I thought this was quite well clued. So well done, Lyle. Thank you. And well done. Keep keep doing this. Anyway, thanks for joining me for whatever this was and whatever it's been appended to. Take care.